getting ready to batter the northeast coast, all thanks to a low pressure spinning off the shore, and it could impact your weekend plans. Steph? People might think it's the weekend with the two of you here uh, joining <laughs> us on America's Morning Headquarters. All eyes on an area to watch in the Caribbean now has a 40 chance, 40 percent chance of developing over the next seven days. Where it could emerge and the uncertainties in the forecast. Reynolds. Okay, three. Two. They're really going to stretch out for us here right into the center of the country from Minnesota all the way down into Oklahoma. We could all be feeling it. And there is one of the culprits. This is your swirl. This is your, uh, you know, upper level low that's coming in. All the moisture being pulled in ahead of it. This gives us lift as well. And so we've got some of those ingredients coming together that are going to help aid in development of thunderstorms. We have a few this morning. We don't have any big time severe thunderstorms this morning, but we expect those later today, perhaps even some rotating supercells. Those are the storms that are rotating and can put down a tornado just because they're rotating. It doesn't mean that they're going to put down a tornado. A lot of times you get large hail with that. We are in the warm sector here. There's a lot of oomph in the atmosphere indicated by that orange shading on our map. And as we go through the day, look at the explosion of storms here and they are going to be progressing eastbound. And as I mentioned, it really kicks off kind of early the evening into the evening hours. That's when we're going to get it. We do have those low level winds that turn southerly and so you're getting this moisture flow that's coming up and then you're also getting that energy as you go higher up in the atmosphere from a different direction. That's what gives us shear. That's what gives us spin. So that low level energy is coming in like that and you can see the winds when you see them cross over uh, perpendicularly perpendicularly. Is that even a word? Um, then you can get that spinning in the atmosphere. There's your tornado threat, your hail threat. Two inch hail is lime size or bigger. We expect bigger than lime size, but that's where we're going to start you off. Right now, there's your showers and a few thunderstorms. But as we go, you'll watch the timeline here. Notice how we get into the early evening hours and you'll see just an explosion. There it is for you around 5 p.m. That's when everything hits. That's when all the ingredients really just come together at just the right time. And then as this whole thing moves east, it's going to lose its oomph as it goes into our Friday, which is our good news. How does it look in Minneapolis for us? There are your storms firing. 4 p.m. I mean, these things are going to crank out the wind, the hail, blinding rain, very dangerous for us. Thankfully, they'll be gone before we go to bed so we can all sleep soundly. And then here's a look at Davenport, 280, 88, 74, Iowa City, Cedar Rapids. We get it as we head into the evening hours tomorrow. Everything kind of shifts to Michigan, down to Champaign, Indianapolis, but it's not going to be as intense for us tomorrow, which is the good news. How about the winds? You'll get thunderstorm winds, but also just from this whole system. We are going to get the winds, so it could be a little bumpy if you're doing any flying in this vicinity. Lynette. All right, Steph. Yeah, and as we go into the weekend, we can see some storms out there as well. So let's talk a little bit about it as we try to get ourselves together. It's Thursday. Of course, we're talking about what's going to be happening as we head in through your Saturday, your Sunday. And you just heard Steph talking about that swirl right there on the water vapor loop. This is what's going to be causing problems today uh, for portions of the Midwest. But watch what happens as we head in through uh, your tomorrow and beyond. So we're going to start to watch this uh, next disturbance. You can see that down there towards the four corners continuing to get its act together. That's that second disturbance that will continue to work its way into the central plains, bringing in plenty of moisture with it once again. So with that, yes, we do have the potential for some flash flooding. Unfortunately, uh, we can see all the areas here shaded in the green. Denver, you're in on this. Dodge City up towards Des Moines and Omaha. Sioux City, you're all going to be getting in on that action. So just uh, uh, know what's uh, going to be uh, on your way, I should say, as we go in through your weekend. So this is what we have uh, goes into motion as we head into Saturday in the evening. So in the morning, it looks to be a little bit on the drier side, but as we go into the evening, we can see all that green starting to move into the map and onto the map. So around Denver, back off towards Des Moines, and you see some of the darker greens there. That's some heavier, steady rain coming in, and this continues to push on off towards the north and east. So by the time we hit your Sunday in the afternoon, around 3 o'clock, Green Bay, Chicago, you'll be getting on, in on this. And some of these areas kind of getting hit twice from uh, the system that was more to the north, and then the second system as well, places like Des Moines, 
Moines, you'll be getting hit twice. So as we go into Sunday into Monday, yes, we're still going to be under that that risk for some flash flooding around Mason City over towards Milwaukee. Now Chicago, you're going to be in, in on this Fort Wayne. We'll see more of the same Indianapolis, St. Louis. So how much rain are we talking before it's all said and done? Uh, so yeah, so we do have right into your Monday morning up to about two to three inches. Uh, you can see that pocket there, the dark green there just to the north of Kansas City. But then look at the swath where you're looking at um, back off towards North Platte or around Denver and even over towards Des Moines. We're going to be watching maybe about one to two inches. Uh, so I will say Reynolds, some of these areas actually do need the rain because we are in a drought. So that's oh, the good news. Yeah, the numbers are off there. It's going to be like 90, it's going to be roasting. I mean, you 100 percent still need that air. It's absurd oh, yeah. still into Dallas, but that's pretty typical, right? I mean, everything's bigger in Texas. We have a couple areas to watch for us here. Uh, remnants of Gordon, this area. We don't really need to worry about these two circles as they eventually kind of lift into the Atlantic. But as we look down at the Central American Gyre, that's where we have to watch for development. Basically, you have this big low pressure kind of spinning around. You can get little low pressures to form in that 40% chance of development over the next seven days. And then where does it go from there? Well, the models are all over, all over the place still because one of the things that these models have a hard time doing, unless you have that low pressure, then it's very hard to determine where it's going to go, when's it going to go, how intense is it going to be. The next same storm is Helene, and then we have Isaac. Isaac, by the way, the I name storm, that is uh, typically the most, not typically, it is the most retired name on the list for us here. So here's a look at the European model. They want to develop things down into the Bay of Campeche. And the chances, this is really a next week event. You don't have to worry about it this week. But the Central American Gyre, as I was mentioning, it's a large circulation. It's very common this time of year, September to November, can produce a lot of rainfall and then spawn those tropical cyclones. And that is where it is located. So within this area, you can get little low pressures to develop. So the system developing in the Western Caribbean, maybe heading here westbound, trying to organize. But regardless, we could still get rain here here into uh, Mexico. It's over warm, you know, temperatures, so there's no problem with that. But the question is, where exactly is this going to develop and when? That is the big, huge question mark. There's limited shear, so that's going to help in development with this system. And as we look at the Euro, the Euro just kind of has it hanging down towards Bay of Campeche, perhaps raining out over Mexico, going into Mexico. And so this is Thursday of next week. And notice that was our low pressure, okay? So the Euro just has it kind of lingering around in this vicinity while the GFS has been wanting to bring this thing up into the Gulf of Mexico. It's been going to Texas. It's been going to Louisiana. It's been going to Florida. Literally, it's been going across the board here. So long story short is it's way too late to determine exactly what's going to happen. If you have interests in Central America and along the Gulf Coast, you need to start paying attention to this. So here's a look at the GFS. There's your energy, again, developing. And then where does the GFS want to take it today? Well, that's going to depend. But right now, the GFS today and the morning model runs want to take it into Florida. But it's literally been going over to Texas, too. So I would say the entire Gulf of Mexico down into Mexico, Cuba, Central America, you should really watch for development of the system. And we still have 42 percent of the season remaining. Don't sleep on this because Sandy was a late storm. Wilma was a late storm. Wilma has the lowest pressure on record in the Atlantic Basin, 882 millibars. Lynette? Yeah, we still have a ways to go. All right, stay there. In yeah. the Alps, they had tremendous snowfall. They sure did. As well. And on this Thursday edition of America's Morning Headquarters, only three. Well, it won't be long before the holidays are here. And, of course, displaying a Christmas tree is one of the season's grand traditions. We partnered with Seal Once to bring you the story of the People's Tree at the U.S. Capitol. Meteorologist Reynolds Wolf has more. Welcome back to America's Morning Headquarters. And uh, if you're going to be doing a little traveling for today, let's take a look at where we could see some delays out there. So we look at the big board, uh, nothing too concerning at, as of now, but we will start to see some changes as we go more towards the afternoon. So just uh, keep that in mind as we do have the potential for some strong and severe thunderstorms across the Midwest for today. So let's head to Minneapolis where we could see uh, some impacts before it's all said and done. More of the same around Kansas City, Orlando, we could be dealing with some thunderstorms. In Miami, we could see some thunderstorms across the 
the area too. So let's talk about what's going to be happening as we go in, maybe even taking it to the roads today. Not going to be the best time to be driving because again, like I said, we do have the potential for some strong and severe thunderstorms across Minneapolis. We could see this around Green Bay, around Madison as well, and all hazards are possible. We could see some local heavy rain. And when I say all hazards, that means tornadoes as well as uh, hail and damaging gusty wind. We put this into motion for you when we start to see when we'll get some of that activity in around three o'clock, four o'clock as it starts to move towards uh, Minneapolis. But check out Minnetonka. Uh, yeah, we'll see this around three o'clock, four o'clock. And you can see that white in that just to the uh, west of Lakeville. Yeah, that's some hail that we're talking. And again, that hail is going to be large in size, uh, possibly maybe two inches in diameter. So it is going to be um, a doozy. Again, you definitely want to park that car inside if you're able to uh, under a carport or in the garage, not necessarily inside your house. That's not what I was saying. All right, let's talk about what's going on across the coast there. And we can see plenty of rain going to be trying to move into Boston around Nantucket for today as well and along I-81 along 95 just to the south of Norfolk around Raleigh Fayetteville that's where we're going to be seeing most of the activity in terms of that rain it's also going to be quite windy out there for today as well Stephen Reynolds all right well good morning from care ground so let's talk about the heat because we're not yeah. quite yet into winter, um, of course, fall starts officially on Sunday, mm -hmm. but the heat is still holding on here. Yeah, so we've got colors here of entirely different uh, yeah. shade, no doubt exactly. about it. And it is a heat and humidity story. La average last 90 for the Midwest are as follows, Stephanie. Look, Chicago, this is for 90. We're not real. We're going to get into the upper 80s, but not necessarily 90. We usually see it at the end of August. The latest mm -hmm. we've seen it is in October. So we can get those late warm-ups, but we're typically finished with it about a month ago. And then we go to the deep s -s 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 south. Look at Atlanta. My goodness. Nashville, Atlanta, Raleigh are examples, but Dallas and New Orleans are in the picture too. Wow. So we should be finished with the 90s in a lot of places here in the south on average, but we're still going to see those warm temperatures. And this is where we look at the average peak times for your fall color. And in the south, it's a lot later. I mean, you're talking November time period, mainly in the south. Yeah, sometimes we get lucky, too, and, and we can have the season stretch a bit longer. Uh, I, I hear, Stephanie, the aspen trees out in the Central Rockies are on point. Yeah, they're already go going off um, because what you need are some of those, you know, warm, sunny days and those cool, crisp nights, but you want them above freezing because you don't want everything to just freeze there. But as you mentioned, they're already going off here they in are Colorado. Indeed. Yeah, Tetons are looking great. Touch of snow possible in parts of the Bridger Teton National Forest. So the snow mixing with the Aspens on point. Uh, up to the northeast again, as yeah, we showed you, the show's you, getting yeah. going. Uh, you know, it's interesting that it's yellow there, showing that it's low, but it's there because those Aspens, that ones that you were talking about. Same color. The beautiful yellow leaves with the white, you know, um, Bark. Yes, it's indeed. just so gorgeous. Yeah, another great place to check out the leaves. Go to Picture Rock National Lakeshore, the Keweenaw Peninsula. All this is just spectacular. Have you incredible. been to Keweenaw? Oh, yeah. Have you? Oh, most definitely. I have yet to be there. I it's an incredible yeah. place. All right, when do we typically see the date of our first freeze? Obviously, the northern tier usually gets it um, into October, September, October. Some places have already had, actually, freezing yes, indeed. temperatures. Yeah, so there you go, guys. Just your average day, your first freeze. And in terms of the temperature outlook, uh, this is no surprise, Stephanie, for the four corners, I think. Why, yeah. why is that? Well, I mean, it's just been hot times there. It's just a trend that's going to continue, it looks like. I mean, no big shakeups, but uh, we do expect a bit of a cool down here, which is some good news. Yeah. And uh, what, what do you think causes this? Just more of an open flow, more possibility of things moving along the coast? More moisture. We could use it, Five though, cover. in the west. Oh, Lynette! Gosh. All right, guys, you know the tropics, though, because after all, it is not severe weather season. It's supposed to be tropic season, and we have a couple areas to watch. Now, these two, the remnants of Gordon in this area, they essentially will both end up as what we call fish storms out to sea. But this area down in the Central American Gyre, that's where we really have to pay attention for potentially our next name system, a 40% chance of development over the next seven days. The question is, within this whole gyre, where exactly does the system develop when does it develop that will determine its path strength there's still a lot of questions but you need to be paying attention if you have interest in Central America uh, Mexico Gulf of Mexico as well I'm talking from Texas over to Florida Helene is the next name storm and notice that the European wants development down in the Bay of Campeche but the European models a lot of the models here just want to kind of hang it around this area, maybe bring it into Mexico, but the GFS has wanted to bring this thing from Texas to Florida and really bomb it out and drop the uh, 
uh, pressure very, very low. So here's where we have the Central American gyre. It's basically a large cyclonic circulation over Central America, and you can get little low pressures to develop within this May to June, September to November, are typically when we see it most commonly there. It also can just produce a lot of rainfall. So even if we don't get a named system, heavy rainfall is possible, and then of course we can spawn the tropical activity. So here is uh, one of the areas that we're looking for, perhaps a slow organization as it goes over Mexico. There's lots of warm water. We don't have any shear to worry about. So there is a chance for some development with this system. Here's a look at the European model. You can see that there's energy that comes over and then it just kind of hangs into the Bay of Campeche. Does it develop there and just go into Mexico or does it eventually go north? That's the big question. Right now, the euro has majority of the low pressure hanging in this vicinity, but you can see some getting pulled north while the GFS really has that pull to the north here. Again, this is a next week system. So keep that in mind that this is going into next week. There's the GFS. There's the energy associated with it. And it is going to probably bring some, you know, gnarly weather maybe to the Yucatan, maybe Cuba. But look how this thing's going north, eventually maybe into the United States. We'll keep watching this closely. The Eastern Seaboard on a high alert for hazardous beach conditions. We want to remind you how dangerous rip currents can be. Meteorologist Jen Carfagno shows you firsthand with the help of a lifeguard how to spot danger in the water and how to keep yourself safe. Tense right there. I mean, we had double digit rainfall um, from that no name system that came ashore. Let's get you out the door in the Midwest and show you ballpark for your game day forecast presented by T Mobile and show you the Mariners versus the Yankees. The gates open 90 minutes prior to the first pitch at T Mobile Park. There are sustainable food options for fans, and nearly all foods served in recyclable or compostable plating or utensils. How cool is that? Umbrellas are permitted as long as you don't block the other guest views, but I'll tell you what, you don't need the umbrella, maybe a hat and some sunglasses. Look at the weather today in Seattle. Just spectacular. The 60s, you'll have a mix of those sun and clouds. So forget the umbrella. Everyone, you know, can see the field and let's play ball. Um, over in other places around the world, we've seen tremendous snowfall. Where was that big snowfall that just happened? Oh, I'm having a mental block right now. It'll come to me. I'll look it up later. Huge snowfall. It was like totally out of the ordinary. Um, anyhow, we don't have the snow. We have the heat. Today, tomorrow through Saturday, we will see around 140 to 150 million Americans above average, especially in the center and on into the northeast. Big Ridge, that's what allows all of this heat to get north, is your jet stream being north. While we have a dip in the jet stream here in the west that gives us some cooler air but that is not going to make it into places like kansas city cincinnati jackson nashville we stay into the 90s so we're not quite finished with the heat yet people above 80 degrees i know that doesn't sound like a lot but when you're supposed to be you know into the 70s that is a big deal i mean summer is essentially gone we should be kind of creeping into those cooler temperatures as fall starts as we head into the weekend look at kansas city i mean it's right on time we see a boundary come through that cools us back down to 74 which is below average on the first day of fall i mean you can't get better timing that right oklahoma city will drop down closer to average will only be about three degrees above average so at least we see a drop from essentially a hundred degrees Degrees tomorrow down to 86. That will be significant. Now, it's not just the daytime highs, it's those overnight lows. And that's what makes it so hard when you go out for a run in the morning or to walk the dog or take the kids to the bus stop or whatever it may be. When it is so warm to start off the day, you never really fully cool off. So let's have a look at our morning low temperatures. Look at Amarillo, 73. 80 into San Antonio, Lake Charles 75, and there are your record warm lows. So we're going to break some of these record warm lows. For instance, look at San Antonio, 78 is the record warm low. We're going to be at 80, so we will break that record because it's warmer than it was back in 2017. These are sometimes hard for your brain to like think about a record warm low because usually we think of that low being cold, but when it stays hot, uh, like here we go into Houston. 77 is a record warm low in 1924. We've come close to breaking that. Uh, so we'll see if we tie that. But Kansas City, our average low is 56. We'll finally be back towards that Reynolds as we head into the beginning of next week. What is it going to take?